What's up, you guys? Thank you for clicking on this video. So, I've been thinking about this for a couple of days now in terms of the future of the Transformers franchise, how long it will last, what could happen in the years to come, and whether or not the Transformers franchise will, will ever truly die or fade away or just not be as popular as it is now. Um, so let's talk about this. In terms of what's going on with the media the past, like, five, six years, ever since the bomb of the last night the mediocre but passable uh, box office revenue of bumblebee and rise of the beast the failing viewership of the netflix series from a couple years back um earth spark and cyberverse i guess those have been doing pretty good but the toy lines on those have were not the greatest there were a couple there's a couple standout figures like with the deluxe class but if you compare it to the toy lines for the past cartoons like animated prime cybertron um beast wars even those toy lines are a lot better and a lot more fun to mess with especially for kids uh so it just feels like we're in this weird space where, yes, we're getting some of the best Transformers figures we, we've ever gotten in terms of studio series, Generations Legacy, um, even some of the Earthspark and Cyberverse figures. But when you look at the media and, you know, even with the comics, IDW, they they went under, what was that, last year, 2021, and Skybound took up the mantle. Uh, the first couple issues have been good. Oh, by the way, uh, review on issue two of Transformers is coming out soon within the next couple of days, so stay tuned for that. Uh, so the comics... They've been up and down too. You know, IDW restarted their timeline, IDW 2.0, back in 2019. And that was a very rocky start and finish, to say the least. Like, they really didn't do too much good in terms of the fandom with how they decided to go along with that new continuity of IDW comics. And, you know, the low sales and the low sales of other IDW properties and comics that they were doing ultimately led to their demise over the years and hope so hopefully skybound picks up the pieces correctly and actually makes the transformers comics something actually really good and fun again like what it was during you know the early 2010s the 2000s and the 90s and 80s most definitely during marvel and g2 which it seems like skybound has with the first two issues hopefully it doesn't go into a rocky storyline come issue three and beyond the merchandise itself, the figures, the clothing, the whatever other, you know, physical merch you want to talk about. It seems like it's selling well. I mean, Hasbro is doing collabs again with Transformers since, what, 2018, 2019 with the Top Gun Maverick figure. Uh, so it seems like they got a little extra budget and wiggle room and creativity the past few years to keep going with those collaborative figures. Because, correct me if I'm wrong, but there was a period in time where Hasbro didn't want to do any collabs with other companies or other uh, franchises. Because ultimately you have to pay a big fee for the figure and all that stuff. Which is why these new collab figures cost so much more than they really should be because of that life licensing fee and it seems like hasbro has been pretty happy with the sales of the transformers figures over the past like five years or so uh because obviously we've seen improvements and expansions within the toy lines of adding commander class they're still doing titan class uh they've added core class in the studio series they added commander class in the studio series just last year they're starting to do other characters from other continuities that's not just the movies and studio series so it really seems like the signs are all there that especially the studio series line is selling really really well and that hasbro is trying to stretch out the line's life by adding these extra characters that you could sort of fudge it into being a studio you know with the games the comics the shows and cartoons from animated and prime that they did say that they want to plan on doing at some point in the years to come within studio series and even look at legacy the generations line which studio series is also a part of the generations line if you just look at the box some people forget that for whatever reason the generations line has expanded so much especially since 2019 
seen when Siege first started. They've started doing, obviously, Beast Wars, Unicron Trilogy, G2, a bunch of obscure repaints and characters that only hardcore fans like us would know. So it seems like Hasbro really does have the extra budget for certain things. Obviously not everything, which I'll talk about here in a few minutes. You know, it wasn't possible four or five years ago to get a Commander Class Armada Optimus Prime figure or a Leader Class Armada Megatron or a Beast Wars Leader Class Megatron or Voyager Optimus and so on. So we've really made a lot of leaps and bounds with the media, with the figures the past few years in the Generations line, taking it back to the actual Generations, the S at the end, instead of just doing full-on G1 or G1 IDW adjacent, like what they were doing previously for like, what, four or five years in a row? But there's still downsides to all this stuff with the figures and the, in the merchandise. Hasbro has not had a good 2023. There's, you know, reports out there about Hasbro's low sales for this year and the price hikes, what's happened since 2020, you know, the, the yellowing issue, all the other QC problems, what happened with HasLab Victory Saber. I mean, that, that was a pretty big deal. Um, all the, all those QC problems with a Hasbro. Lab, a limited run figure that only had what like 20 something thousand copies made that is not a lot at all compared to all the mass retail releases that get I'd assume a couple million copies made or maybe even more I'm not sure on that I'm not some expert on that it really does seem like while Hasbro's had the extra wiggle room these past four or five years within the toy lines specifically the generations lines it does seem like in other regions, they've really gotten worse and started to slack in terms of the QC, some of the build quality of these figures, you know, a, a lot of stress marks happening way easier than they should, yellowing happening way sooner than it should, like I'm talking yellowing happen happening after a few days or a few weeks or a few months ha after having a figure. And of course, the price hikes that have happened, especially in the recent years since 2020, we don't have to get into that, we all know what happened. I'm I'm in the boat of one of those people that thinks after a certain period of time, the price hikes were happening just to be greedy on Hasbro's part and to take advantage of the situation of what was happening and what's pretty much still happening with with millions of people out there in the world uh, and using, you know, the 2020 incident as an excuse to up these prices. Like, I I have a tough time believing that is still causing multi-billion dollar companies to raise prices of stuff by five dollars, ten dollars, a couple dollars, whatever it is. Obviously, I'm not some business or money expert. It, it comes a time where it's like, what is really going on here? Uh, if you look at history, there's so many instances of corporations, businesses, all these multi-billion dollar corporations, especially here in the U.S., straight up lying about stuff, doing things that they shouldn't be doing. So who knows? I'm just throwing that idea out there. And then obviously with the Rise of the Beast movie that happened, it seems like Hasbro was sort of happy with how the merch for that movie sold. But obviously those ticket sales didn't amount to much. It wasn't a total flop, but it wasn't a lot compared especially compared to what it was, you know, 10 years ago with the Bayformer movies. So with all that said, and keeping all of this in mind over the past recent years, 5 to 10 years, the Transformers franchise is in a little bit of a weird limbo, especially with the media. So I don't know. I honestly have no idea what the Transformers franchise is going to be 10 years from now, um, 15, 20 years from now, especially. Uh, I'm not trying to be all doom and gloom here. But I'm just, I'm just looking at the facts and looking at what's been going on the past five, ten years. And it's very strange. A lot of weird things. I don't think the Transformers franchise is ever going to fully go away, but there might be a period in time like what happened in the nineties or even the early two thousands where Hasbro really is going to start dialing back on things. I'm not going to, I'm not saying that that's going to happen anytime soon. Maybe like if they keep going the way they're going with the movies doing as bad.
bad as they as they are and not really improving on the things that us fans want them to improve on with the cartoons, the toys, the price hikes, all that stuff. If they keep going the way they've been going, especially for the, for the last couple years since 2020, it might not look good for the Transformers franchise. And obviously, I don't want that to be the case. I mean, this is how <laughs> this is how I make a lot of my money right now in my life. So I would hate for the Transformers franchise to go away because I've grown up with, with this since I was a little kid. I love it. It is basically my freaking life at this point. So, uh, but it's just something to keep in mind, especially if you're a Transformers fan and somebody who uses the Transformers franchise as a, as a catapult to make some income in your personal life. Cause I know there's a lot of you out there that do that, that make money from Transformers content, stop motions, all sorts of stuff with Transformers. So it's just something to keep in mind and think about and really wanting and striving for the Transformers franchise to actually do well and for Hasbro to actually listen to the fans on what they need to work on. Uh, not to say that everything is bad, obviously. There's been a lot of great stuff. There's still really great toy sales going on, especially within the Generations line, even though Hasbro had a bad year this year. It's still not all bad. It's just these certain things with the media and what they're doing with the QC and the price hikes that are really damaging the brand right now in a way that if they keep going, like I said, it it might have a heavy impact and damage in the next in the next, I don't know, five, ten years. Who knows? That's pretty much all I want to talk about in this video before I start going around in circles. Uh, let me know, let me know down in the comments below. What do y'all think about this situation? Do you think the Transformers franchise will ever die or fade out? And do you think if they keep going the way they're going with some of the me a lot of the media these days being very iffy and some stuff with the toys like the QC price hikes, the open box packaging, stealing going up. Do you think the Transformers franchise will start to see a heavy decline in the years to come until they they fix these luring issues all my social medias are linked down below instagram tiktok twitter facebook all that good stuff my email is also down below if y'all want to hit me up about business inquiries or if you want to message me about whatever or if you want to commission a diorama from me because i make dioramas for people for their stop motions photography or just regular display shelves in their homes you could either hit me up on any of my social medias or just email me and we can work out a deal but yeah guys thank you for watching this video i'll catch y'all in the next one bye